Now that you've been working with the normal distribution for a while, I'd like to go back and sort of uh, put some things into perspective and make sure that you understand the basic nature of the normal distribution and, and particularly how we're going to use it to uh, calculate probabilities that we're interested in. The most basic thing that you can know about the normal distribution is that it, it is a bell-shaped curve and it's always symmetric about its mean mu and the total area under the curve is always one. In addition, the shape of a normal curve is always completely determined by its mu, its mean, and its sigma, its standard deviation. If you know the mean and standard deviation of a normal random variable, you know exactly what the normal curve associated with that random variable looks like. I've exaggerated some of these things here just to make a point, but given a certain value of mu, the only way the curve can, va can um, vary is in, is in its um, standard deviation. A small standard deviation, say of a half, has a curve that hugs the uh, mean more closely. As the standard deviation gets larger, the curve spreads out farther and farther in the tails. In this course, one of our main reasons for studying the normal distribution is to use it to calculate probabilities. And in order to do that, one of the skills we're going to have to uh, develop and enhance is the skill of finding the area underneath the normal curve between two different values. And the reason we need that is because these areas are going to, going to represent probabilities of things that we're interested in calculating. There is somewhat of a problem though, but we're going to solve it, and that is how can you have a table to look these things up in, in if you could have varying means and standard deviations? As we've said earlier, a normal curve is completely determined by its mean and standard deviation, but if you've got one problem with a mean of 5 and a standard deviation of 2, and another problem with a mean of uh, 0.7 and a standard deviation of 1.62, you're going to have to have a table for every possible combination of those, and that's simply not possible. There is a way around that, and that's what I want to talk about now. Of course, you've seen this already, so you know what I'm going to say. The trick, the way around this, is to standardize our normal random variable. And the way you do that is you take the, the normal random variable, we'll call it x, subtract off its mean, and divide by its standard deviation. If you do that, you get a new random variable, which we typically call z, and that is the standard normal random variable. In other words, z is distributed as a normal distribution with a mean of zero, mu is zero for a standard normal, and the standard deviation is always one. So if we can standardize our variables before we try to look them up in the table, then we'll always be looking them up in the z table, in other words, the standard normal table, and that that takes an infinite number of possibilities for tables which we cannot deal with and reduces it down to always looking it up in one table. So if we can take a normal random variable, subtract off its mean, divide by its standard deviation, we will have the standard normal which always has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one and we can table those values and in fact those are the values that are tabled in the back of your book. And just to point this out once again, as for any normal curve, the total area underneath is always 1. And because the normal distribution is always symmetric about its mean, half of the area will always lie to the left of the mean. And of course, the other half of the area will lie to the right of the mean. 